Gospodine Olofsson, prvo pitanje za vas. Vi ste stvarno fascinantan umjetnik. Osim što ste stvarno fascinantan, imate apsolutni sluh i sinesteziju, što vama doživljaj glazbe čini još intenzivnijim nego nama ostalima. Vi, dakle, svaku notu, svaki akord vidite u bojama. Kako to funkcionira? Slušate li ili izvodite možda neka dijela više ili manje rado zbog vizualnog doživljaja glazbe? Thank you. Yeah. So, very nice question. First of all, wonderful to be here in Zagreb. Um, it's hard to answer because I don't know how it is not to have this. Um, um, I always was like that and I expected everybody to be like that. And when I found out not everybody thinks the pitch of F is blue, I'm wearing pitch of F, uh, I was shocked actually. Um, but it's, I think it's not so dramatic, it's just the way things are. So the Ravel Concerto, for instance, it's very often in two tonalities in the same time. You can have, you know, G major, which for me is red, the color, and you can have uh, F sharp major, which is purple for me. Uh, and those, those then blend together, um, but it's not crazy. It's not like I have a filter over my eyes and I see like psycho colors <laughs> mm -hmm. when I'm playing. But when you ask me what is the color of A, I will say yellow. Just like I look at the sun and I say the sun is yellow. It's just somehow how it is. Uh, Gospodine Won, vi ste koncertni majstor Sinfonijskog orkestra Montreal i solist, ali ste također i omiljen profesor na Schulich School of Music u Montrealu. Prije nekoliko godina također ste dobili i godišnju nagradu svog fakulteta za poučavanje. Uh, pitanje u čemu leži tajna toga kako istovremeno biti odličan glazbenik i uspješan profesor? Koliko su te pozicije različite ili slične? Thank you for your question. Um, both of these jobs that you listed being concertmaster and teaching at McGill. Uh, I had those jobs quite early in my career, probably... Oh, I got both of those jobs when I was probably too young. Um, and I was very lucky to be surrounded by people who thought of uh, my employment as an investment. And I didn't quite realize it at the time. I thought, well, if they've asked me to be concertmaster, um, I must be ready and amazing. And if I'm teaching these students, well, I must know everything. And I look back in some, at some of the decisions I made, and <laughs> I'm very regretful. However, um, what, to answer your question, uh, what does it take to be successful in this business? I think it's humility. I think it's uh, accepting that I don't know everything. And uh, I'm constantly learning, even from my students, Sometimes I will leave a lesson and I'll realize, well, I should be playing the way they're playing, or I see something in their playing that's reflected in mine, and I, I can be better. And at work, I learn from my colleagues all of the time. And if I think of my position as not malleable or not flexible, I think that's the end of the growth. Uh, Mr. Olofsson, uh, your albums with works of uh, Bach, Debussy and Mozart and contemporaries uh, have more than 260 million streams. Uh, you've been called the new superstar of classical piano. Uh, but also, like uh, Leonard Bernstein, you hosted TV shows and radio shows about classical music. But it is very interesting that your latest CD, From Afar, that was uh, released earlier this month for Gra uh, Deutsche Grammophon, uh, is actually uh, doesn't doesn't contain just classical music it also has folk songs right yes um, I have done with Deutsche Grammophon a few albums and I have been doing more kind of um, kind of iconic like Johann Sebastian Bach Debussy Rameau uh, Mozart you know and, and Philip Glass before and then now I wanted something completely different. Last year I met the composer Georgi Kurtak in Budapest, the Hungarian composer, who for me is the greatest composer in the world. He's 96 years old, almost 100. 
he invited me to meet him uh, because he had been listening to my work for years. I had no idea. Meeting Kurtak for me was like meeting Robert Schumann or Maurice Ravel. I, I love him. Uh, and we had a beautiful time. And then when I came home to Iceland, where I'm from, uh, I wanted to write him a letter to thank him. And it's like writing a letter to Schumann, what you write. I couldn't find the words, but I had many musical ideas. And it brought me down to my own childhood, uh, music that I grew up with. After meeting Kurtak, I started asking myself, what, who am I? What makes me, me in music? What is my DNA in music? And this is the result, this album. It's homage to Kurtak. It's called From Afar, from the distance, which is where I come from. And it has nine composers, which have been with me for a long time, including Icelandic pieces. And a lot of Kurtak, Bartok, Mozart, Schumann, Brahms, and of course, Bach. My guys, yeah. I will actually see Mr. Kurtak tomorrow. We are going to Budapest to play tomorrow. And when I, uh, yes, I will see him tomorrow, yeah. Uh, Mr. Wan, you play on Bergonzi violin, which is 280 years old. Even your bow is more than 150 years old. Uh, my question is, beside having, uh, of course, so much respect for, for that kind of instrument. But what is the key difference between new and old instruments, specifically violins? What do virtuosos like you feel and notice when you play or listen? And what differences the music enthusiasts, like most of us here, could potentially hear or notice? The instruments that I play on um, are on loan to me by uh, two very uh, generous philanthropists in Montreal, and we have a beautiful culture of uh, giving and generosity in Quebec. Um, when I joined the orchestra, Maestro Nagano, who was uh, Raphael Payare's predecessor, asked me, do you have a fine instrument of your own? And at the time when we were in school, uh, I was borrowing a beautiful, we were, yeah, classmates, and um, back at that, Back at that time, I was borrowing a beautiful Del Jesu, but I had to return it upon graduation. So Nagano asked uh, this gentleman, David Sella, can you find Andrew an instrument? And he did. Uh, it was uh, a long process. It took about 18 months, and it culminated in uh, many violins being flown to Montreal from Amsterdam, Cremona, London, Boston, Chicago. And I got to choose the instrument uh, we played in many different halls. I got to play it in different settings. And this violin spoke to me. Uh, this violin used to belong to Daniel Guillet of the Beaux-Arts Trio. He's the founding violinist of the Beaux-Arts Trio. And at least under my ear, and when I listen to recordings of it, um, I feel like there's a texture and grain to the sound that I just don't find in new instruments. That is, it's always a little bit complex, a little bit uh, hard to decipher, but never a pure, uh, flat, static tone, and I enjoy that very much. The bow itself uh, has a very special story. That I, will, I, I feel sorry for uh, our I, friend here, can but... I, can I translate and then you... you no, I, I can finish. I'm, I'm very happy to play on this French bow. Thank you. Mr. Olaf, Olafsson, of course I have to ask you something about Iceland. It's the land with the highest number of writers in the world. One of 10 Iceland's inhabitants has published a book, and one in four people there work in a creative field. Um, Iceland is among top five places uh, on the World Happiness Report. I don't know if you knew that. It seems that cold and volcanic, uh, yet exotic and soothing scenery arouses art and happiness in people. You've been to a lot of places, met and collaborated with many people. Is there something special and mystic about Iceland that made you an incredible artist that you are today? Wow, you could sell Iceland as the uh, foreign minister. <laughs> I would minister. really like to go yeah, there. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I, I think, only uh, know, know it by some documentaries yeah. and TV series like uh, Ufert? Yeah. Trapped? Ufert, yeah. 
I think that inf I think that influence is something that is, uh, if it's real influence, something that really makes you who you are. It's too deep in you that you can't even analyze it. It's like if you're to talk about your mother or your father and how they've made you who you are, nobody can really do that. You can say things, but you can't say the truth. It goes deeper than, than words, the experience. Iceland is a little bit like that because it's a huge, I mean not huge, but it's a very big island for only 350,000 people. It has the biggest glacier in Europe. It has these volcanoes that keep erupting. Uh, it has so much space for so few, you know, 350,000. It's like a little neighborhood in London, you know. Uh, but that's it. We, we have this island and it's somewhere in between America and Europe. And we are neither completely, of course not American, but we are not completely European either. We are this weird place. So, so I think that, that the way that country influences you in one way, I can say, is that it has space and it's quite easy to be feel and be alone with nature and with the the cosmos in that sense i mean not everybody does that but you can drive 25 minutes from my house in reykjavik and in 25 minutes you can feel like you're on the moon and there is no one you're completely alone with the mountains and the lakes and the volcanoes and everything uh, but i can't say how it influences me maybe we go into creative fields because it's a terrifying place to live. It's very dark in the winter, very cold and windy in the winter. In the summer, it's completely bright and incredibly beautiful, but it's extreme, always extreme. Uh, sorry, I can't maybe even people, answer your question. Maybe people you know. are more introspective <coughs> because of that. That makes you yeah. also special. The space and the nature, it does do something to you. Thank you so much for uh, tonight's performance and for this conversation. We wish you all the best in the future and please do come back here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hvala i vama, poštovani posjetitelji. Vidimo se sljedeće subote kad s našim cijenjenim maestrom Mladenom Tarbukom slavimo veliki rođendan. Hvala još jednom i laka vam noć.